and it makes people upset when there's black people in the film when they're when they're supposed to be there. Like you're you're not supposed to be upset at this film. You're supposed to get upset at literally every other film you watched before this that told you that lie that these cowboys were were white. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to a new episode of Mostly Wrong Opinions. I am Tyrone. That's Devin. This is a new mic. <laughs> we're about to <laughs> we're about to review a movie that's that's on Netflix right now and it's starring an all black cast and it's from the is it it's filmed in the West for the Western type type of shit and <laughs> it's, it's a Western movie. I'm sorry. And it's, it's called um, The Heart of the Heart. I know who you are. That love, the outlaw, hunts down those who trespass against him with no mercy. It has some style to it, bro. <laughs> it, it's, yeah, it's got a lot of style. A lot. It, it's like it, dripping with it. It's dripping, you know, like, what's it? Swagoo. Uh, yeah, <laughs> swagoo. And, <laughs> and uh, it's produced by by uh, Sean Carter, as you know, is Jay Z. This stars a lot of people, though. <laughs> this stars mm-hmm. uh, Jonathan Majors, uh, ZZ Beats, yeah. Idris Elba, Regina King, Lakeith Stanfield. I love Lakeith Stanfield. Uh, uh, R.J. Siler, a whole cast, and uh, D- Delroy Lindo. <laughs> uh, yep. It's just Who is also awesome in The Five Bloods. Yeah, he should have should have been nominated for an Oscar for that. Absolutely robbed, but anyway, robbed, robbed, <laughs> dog. Uh, Woody McClay, like Woody, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and and a surprise, uh, ca- two surprise casting that I didn't think would be in this film: Dion Cole and, and Damian Wayne Jr. <laughs> right, um, yeah, a lot of comedians, yeah, yeah, and they did a good job, uh, both of them, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so this movie follows. Uh, Idris Elba is 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 an outlaw that's getting released from prison. He's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. <laughs> and right. um, but he's not the main character though. Just to be clear, he's not the main character. The main character is, is Jonathan Majors, and um, some uh, some things happened to Jonathan Majors when he was a kid, and he needs he needs to seek revenge on Idris Elba from for what happened to him. And um, this cast, they bring it, man. They they yeah. bring it, and uh, the director. I kind of feel, you know me, I feel like the director took some styles from Sam Raimi. <laughs> in oh, this yeah, that's funny. This movie is a lot more similar to the Quick and the Dead, you know, style Western film than, you know, like a more traditional Western film, which we watched. And we're going to talk about that in another episode. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, this one's super stylish. And it, you're right. It follows I just Alba. He's the antagonist, though. And the yeah. protagonist is the leader of the Nat Love gang. His name is... That love and that love. and that love is out for revenge and guess what he's got it revenge is done we're finished movies movies over before it started we are all good bad guy rufus buck is in jail all the bad people who hurt that love when he was a little boy they're dead he that love is ready to ride out into the sunset when this film starts except rufus buck gets let out of prison and he thinks, ah, he's escaping. But no, he didn't. He got a freaking pardon. And he's like, how, yeah. is this, how is this possible? How is the biggest, baddest he, a person he calls the devil? How did he get a pardon? And he's being let out of prison. So, of course, he straps those six irons, six shooters back on his side. And he gets ready to get some killing done. <laughs> and this yeah. movie, like you said, is like super, super stylish. It was I like one of the things I kind of liked about the style is we've kind of accepted a certain Western style. Like you're used to when you see a Western film, you're you're used to hearing like an electric guitar going like, you know, but why? Why an electric guitar? The electric guitar did not exist in 1890, whatever. Right. That was just something that some white people, they thought the electric guitar sounded pretty dope. So they put it, they, 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 and they're not wrong. You know, they put it in the background of a lot of their Western films. This director, he's like, you know what I think sounds dope? Reggae. So he reggae, puts reggae. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he puts reggae back there. <laughs> you know, he's not any more wrong or any more right than the old spaghetti westerns, right? He, it's just a choice. And to me, I thought some of those musical choices sounded really cool. And it was not, it was completely unexpected. So like the, the, the whole soundtrack kind of has like a hip hop reggae thing going on. 
the hip hop part kind of sounds like Django Unchained a little bit to me, but yes. the reggae sounded like wholly unique, wholly original. And then on top of that, like I don't know who he got to you know make his graphics, but they were having a ball because they <laughs> they were they <laughs> were going crazy. Yeah, yeah, they were going crazy because this movie's like super super stylish and very colorful. Like there are mm-hmm. there are there are parts in the film that are so colorful it doesn't even make any logistical sense as to right. why it, it's so colorful the town <laughs> right. the town itself the wood is pe- exactly. you got building this red or building this green or building this blue and stuff yeah I'm like, and then the, the, and, 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 and then the lights inside the building are like different colors and like it i just think it, it makes it makes the whole thing feel like so like to me energetic like the movie to me had a lot of energy which is a positive because it's it's longer than I was expecting. It's it's uh, it's much longer than I was expecting. It's a two but hour movie and moves, thirty minute movie, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the movie moves at such a clip that I, I imagine some people might find that jarring because it moves so fast. Again, to me, I, I I really enjoyed it. I also enjoyed how they portrayed Idris Elba's character. Idris Elba, this was this kind of reminded me why Idris Elba is. I don't know, I just Alba. Like he's, he's yeah. they, 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 they gave him such a presence. They seem mm-hmm. every time he was on screen, it was like they were introducing him for the first time, right? He yeah. would like he would like appear out of the shadows, you know, or just like loom. Like it was he, he seemed he felt like the devil. He felt evil. Like and, and like mm-hmm. I mean, the first time we see him in full, because we see him multiple times. We usually he's from behind. We don't see his face. Yeah. But the first time we see him in full, he's like stepping out of this like big bank safe like he's like like he's Hannibal Lecter or something like if you if he if he gets let that let out of this safe who knows what's gonna happen like yeah. that's, that's that's quite the introduction for a character which again I, I really liked and also the thing about Aegis Elba's character at the end of this movie his monologue to where we find out who he is yeah perfect <laughs> yeah yeah perfect man I was like oh that's a twist <laughs> yeah I've, I've, I've heard people describe Idris Elba as a leading man without a leading man's movie. Like, I feel like Idris Elba yes. has been missing a movie that that really showcases what he can do. And of course, he's not the leading man in this one. But this this film does remind me why so why people want him to be James Bond. Why people like why why he why he is in such demand because in this film he had such like a presence that was fantastic, and it helped. That he was flanked by Regina King, an Oscar winner, a, 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 a truly ama- a, a Oscar winner and an Emmy winner, a yes. truly amazing actress, and she too had quite the presence. Like she was really scary, and then the, them together Bro. were quite the team. I was like, throughout the whole movie, I was like, man, they're they are an evil team, like kind of like Bonnie and Clyde before Bonnie and Clyde, but <laughs> right. it's just. I wanted her to be the good person. <laughs> I wanted her. Yeah. I wanted her to be good, but I know she was bad. And here's the thing about yeah, you're kind characters. of rooting for her, right? Yeah. Which is which is weird because she's acting in direct opposite of our man of our main characters. <laughs> and and the thing is, these people that they're portraying are real people. That now the story itself that they have in the story is, is fictional. Go ahead and tell them, uh, uh, Devin, who is uh, Delroy Lindo's uh, 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 character in here. I, I love this story that uh, we just talked about. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, Sorry. I'm bef- <laughs> before this movie really came out proper, you know, you hear a lot of buzz about the black cowboy film or whatever that was going to come out. And with that, you get your natural backlash, which is, you know, pretty standard. People are like, how come they're all, how come they're all black? They're all blah, black. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> cowboys weren't black, but they were. Like, cowboys <laughs> were black. Cowboys were black. They were Latino. They were Native American. The white people who did those jobs, they were like, they, they, they were called cowhands. After enslavement, one in four of all cowboys were black. And the term itself, cowboy, has an etymology and a connection to black cowhands who were formerly enslaved and then derogatorily named by their enslavers. Do your research, people. Do your research. Cowboys were black. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry. And when you look at these people, you look at their actual photographs, they are black or native. And, and and this movie is more accurate in that way, anyway, in that way, than a lot of yeah. other films. Now you're talking about Daryl Linda. 
he portrays a character, Bass Reeves. He's the only, to be fair, to be honest, he's the only real life cowboy that I was actually aware of before I saw this film. And Bass Reeves was a real life cowboy, and he's the person that the Lone Ranger is based off of. Oh! Now, when you think, <laughs> yeah, and when you think of the Lone Ranger, you probably see a white man on top of a white horse going, "I hold silver," you know. <laughs> That's, he looked like that, you know. He looked like a black man with a big old bushy beard. They just erased all that. They just scrubbed all that from the from the yep. record, and now they replaced Lone Ranger's image or Bass Reeves' image with a fictional a fictional white man and. I liked that they kind of brought him back for this film. Now, to be fair, he didn't do that much in this film. He was just kind of like there. You know, I think yeah. he had he had a couple moments in the, towards the end. But it, yeah. it, it I, I thought it was quite refreshing to see black people as cowboys. Because if you're a child back in time, if you were really to be Marty McFly and travel back in time to the Wild Wild, wild West days. Marty McFly would stand out because he, he's, he's, he's the wrong color. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of the poncho, that, that's a Mexican poncho. Why do you think cowboys wear Mexican ponchos? It's because they were Mexican? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, people. Let's use our brains here. But anyway, uh, back to back to this actual film. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I enjoyed it more than I, than I thought I would. I thought I would just kind of get a kick out of, you know, more historically accurate cowboys, but I actually liked the stylish nature of the film. I enjoyed uh, I just Elba's characters quite a bit, and and I liked the who's who's the guy who was he had he, he was he was like the six shooter. He was like the fast. He was he thought he was like the fastest gun in the west, and he they they they, they put him in opposition of um, Lakeith Stanfield. Oh, yeah, that's and Lakeith uh, Stanfield RJ. just cheated. Yeah. Yeah, R.J. Siler. He that man, and there's memes about this this dude now. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> of course, uh, you have a talk, a uh, guy that talks so much and never gets anything done or something. <laughs> you know? right. And I'm telling you, man, well, I knew he was he, young. I knew he was gonna be. He, he oh, you know, of course. He, you know who he remind me of? Leonardo DiCaprio's the kid. That's he exactly me right. Exactly. I was just gonna say it. I was just gonna say it. Yeah, exactly <laughs> like him. That's why I said it. it's very similar. To the quick and the dead in that in that in in that way. So some of the, some of the characters and some of the style style points very similar. Pop, popping off at the mouth, talking about you fast. I was like, just like Leo and Leo got shot <laughs> and died. But at least, but at least, and this is uh, light spoilers, I suppose. I mean, it's, it's obvious the second you see him, he's gonna die. But whatever. Right. Uh, light <laughs> light spoilers. Mm -hmm. At least Leonardo DiCaprio died fairly, right? He had a fair shootout. Sure uh, did, yeah. This, this, this new kid, he assumed that the other guy was gonna play fair, and he just got shot. <laughs> when he was spinning his guns around, yeah. counting and being flashy, he just got shot I, right then. I hate when they count slow. <laughs> and and Lakeith and Lakeith Stanfield, he he hinted towards that. He was like, he was like, it doesn't really matter who's faster. It's who's alive after the battle, right? That's that's who gets to tell the story. And so yeah. he just shot that dude in the face while he was being flashy. He was like, well, guess it's me. <laughs> and <that> was that. <laughs> so another gripe that people were having about uh, Zazie Beetz' character in this mm -hmm. uh, Stagecoach Mary, you know, Stagecoach Mary was a darker skin, heavier set woman in real life, and uh, they, for some reason, man, when it comes to you know, when black people are cast as you know, real characters in real life, uh, they'd be like, well. That's she ain't dark or she ain't or she ain't light enough or something like that. If, I don't agree with none of that. If the care if the woman or the person or the man will ever can bring that out of the character, then unless you're Will Smith in in in, in Wild Wild West because he was totally white, <laughs> <laughs> in, right. in the character. But go ahead and cast that character, well, man. I think the reason why people were upset about that is because uh, there's no lack of work for pretty light-skinned girls in Hollywood. You know what I mean? But there yeah. is a lack of work for a dark-skinned, heavyset woman. And this is a role that really was made for a dark-skinned, heavyset woman. And they cast a light-skinned black girl. So I, I understand it, but I also understand your point too, that I enjoyed, I enjoyed seeing Zazie Beetz in the role. But so, but I, I understand it. And it's also other criticism, right? Cause you know, I said earlier that a lot of these cowboys were black. That's only partially true. Uh, they were, like I said, they were black, Latino, and Native American, and I believe Nat Love himself 
was black and Native American. And if you look at his picture, he doesn't look like Jonathan Majors. He looks he looks more like he looks he looks more Latino in in, in appearance. So a lot of people were wondering, you know, why, you know, it wasn't while they while them not being white was more accurate. The, the actors themselves still did not look uh, like their historical counterparts. I'm going to go ahead and get my rating on this film with it being flashy, with it being a great cast that every one of them can act. Oh, and a uh, little known fact, Chadwick was supposed to be in this movie. Chadwick Boseman mm-hmm. was supposed to play a part in this. We didn't know which one, which part he was supposed to play. Uh, but of course, sadly, Chadwick Boseman passed away before he could film any of the scenes. I would assume that it would have been Lakeith's uh, part. I kind of feel like that too. Yeah, yeah. But uh, rest in peace to Chadwick Boseman, man. With all that, with all the actors there and the the real people that these that these this story is based on, really cool information, especially about Bash Reeves. Um, and it just goes to show you, man, whitewashing is everywhere, boy. It's everywhere, music. especially in Hollywood. Especially, in Hollywood. yeah, music too. Oh, yeah. It's, oh. It's, it's, it's deep. Like, the, it's, it's really deep. <laughs> and yeah. you just assume things about films. Like, when you see a Western, you just kind of assume everybody's going to be white, which is bizarre because you shouldn't, right? That's not how it was. Yeah. It's, it's just not how it was. We ain't, we ain't hating on you white folks. We love you no. white so, no. <laughs> but, 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 but uh we talking about the industry as a whole, man. And it makes people upset when there's black people in the film when they're when they're supposed to be there. Like you're you're not supposed to be upset at this film. You're supposed to be upset at literally every other film you watched before this that told you that lie that these cowboys were were white. Exactly. Wouldn't be no Clint Eastwood. <laughs> nope. You know? <laughs> so our John, John Wayne Pilgrim. <laughs> nope, that's right. No. That's right. <laughs> but um Pilgrim, what a word to say. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> but but uh <laughs> but um I'm gonna rate this movie uh at eight point five. Awesome. I that's exactly the rating I was gonna give it, man. Eight point five. I really enjoyed this film. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. I liked the music, I liked the flashiness, uh I I enjoyed some of the historical accurate accuracies that they had there it wasn't all perfect but i enjoyed that uh and watching this film it kind of dawned on me uh how netflix had positioned this film netflix mm. had a lot of confidence in this movie uh yeah. and they they really think i think netflix has positioned this film to be an oscar contender now i don't know if it's going to be an oscar oscar contender contender but you look at the time of year they released it in right this oscar season this is when your oscar yeah. movie's going to drop Right now, yeah. and they and they gave it a, a, a theatrical run. That way, it's one hundred percent qualified to be in the Oscars. Cause, cause yeah, it was. It wasn't in, a theater too. Yeah, yeah. Because I think the old rules for the Oscars. I think I think it's changed last year. But I think the old rules for the Oscars was that your movie had to at least have been in the theater at some point in order to be uh, considered for an Oscar. So it, they put it in the theater. They released it like now during Oscar season. So they really, or at least during prestige movie season. So they really think. Netflix has a lot of confidence in this film. I enjoyed some of the acting and I enjoyed some of the production. So to me, I think an 8.5 is a fair film. Me and Devin agree again. It's like <laughs> five. I can count on my hand probably. It's time to be agreed. <laughs> you know? So I gave this movie an 8.5. It won't last Devin, long. It won't last it won't. long. Don't worry. It won't. <laughs> Devin gave this movie an 8.5. We recommend that you... Go ahead, you know, grab some popcorn, sit on, sit on your couch, grab a cowboy hat and your cowboy boots, kick back and watch The Harder They Fall. Thank you for clicking on this video. We really do appreciate it. Um, it's, it's really awesome. You got we've gained like probably like ten more subscribers in the last uh, uh, week or so, and we really do appreciate all the love that you guys have have done by watching this video. Um, and you know, if you are new to this, please hit that subscribe button. You know what I'm saying? It's right there. It's a click. Boom. You use your <laughs> mouse or the little pad on your thing and you move the thing <laughs> the cursor over to the subscribe and it's really mm. fun you should try it <laughs> okay you know it's also fun that notification bell oh my god i clicked it one time oh. it was incredible it was incredible <laughs> man you get dings okay yeah. 10 out of 10 like, i recommend it 
I recommend <laughs> <laughs> So you can stay up to date with everything that we do on Mostly Wrong Opinions because we have more things coming out because guess what? Hawkeye is coming out in a week and guess who's reacting to it? Us. <laughs> okay. And you want to be subscribed and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with it. So... And it's prestige season coming up, so guess who's gonna watch all these stuffy fake deep movies? You know, Will Smith has got one. <laughs> Will Smith has got one coming out next week. It's gonna exactly. be stuffy. It's gonna be fake deep, and it's gonna be based on real people. And it's gonna be a historic, a historical drama. Oh my God, the Oscars love it. You can hear them all beating off in the background right now. Exactly. <laughs> be here for that. And also, you know, it, what you can do is leave a like on this video if you really did like our, our review. Or you can leave a thumbs down on this video if YouTube still has it. Yeah, I'm like, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> either way, either you make that, that real thumbs up or that metaphorical thumbs down. <laughs> it is your opinion. But just remember one thing. It is mostly wrong. Peace.